Hello everyone, welcome back to Food Tech Geeks where I, Rachna Sharma, upload videos, lectures, tutorials, career guidance videos, exam related videos on food science and technology. So this video is the fourth video in the series where we are discussing most important MCQs with proper explanation for upcoming FSSCI exams and the other related exams. So before we start with our questions, please subscribe to the channel and also subscribe to our telegram page so that you do not miss any important update. So let's start with today's questions. Question number one is the viable number of microorganisms in food with added probiotic ingredients shall be and the options are given. So in the previous video we have discussed what are probiotics. So they are the live bacteria that are good for our health especially for our digestive system and it is suggested that probiotics must contain at least like the minimum number is 10 to the power 6 viable colony forming units per gram to be able to survive the digestion and exert a positive effect in the body. But here the answer is not 10 to the power 6 because the minimum recommended effective dose per day to a human being is 10 to the power 8 colony forming units per gram. Here this is the line from FSS Act which states that the viable number of organisms in food with added probiotic ingredients shall be equal to or more than 10 to the power 8 colony forming units per gram. Next question, IFSA formed by FSSCI stands for, so IFSA stands for Indian Food Sharing Alliance and it is a social initiative by FSSCI to help and solve India's food waste and hunger crisis by integrating various uh, partner organizations, uh, food recovery agencies and different NGOs and the aim of FSSCI via this IFSA initiative is to care aware, share, prepare and declare. So these are the five major aims which FSSCI is targeting via this IFSA initiative. Next question, Codex was created by, so Codex is a collection of international standards, guidelines and codes of practice to protect the health of consumers and ensure that fair practices are followed in a food trade. So it was established in 1963 jointly by WHO and FAO. So the answer is option B. It was created by jointly by WHO and FAO. FAO is Food and Agriculture Organization and WHO stands for World Health Organization. Next question, WTO Secretariat is based in. So uh, WTO is an international organization that deals with the global rules of trade between nations. Its main function is to ensure that trade flows as smoothly, predictably and freely as possible. So it came in existence in 1995 and it is based in Geneva. Next question, head office of Spice Board is located at. So Spice Board was constituted on 26th February 1987 under Spice Board Act 1986. And it was established by merging Cardamom Board 1968 and Spice Export Promotion Council 1960. So it is important to remember that the Spice Board was established after merging two of the organizations that was Cardamom Board and the Ex Spice Export Promotion Council. And it is Indian Government Regulatory and Export Promotion Agency for Indian Spices. As the name suggests, it deals with Indian Spices and its headquarter is in Kochi. So the option A is the correct answer. And the chairperson of Spice Board currently is Shri A.G. Thangkappan. So these are all the information about Spice Board of India. Next question, what is carry over principle? So this is a term which is being used in food additives. So carryover food additives are those that come from the ingredients and raw materials but they are not directly added to the final product. For example, if there is a product, there is a final product and a particular additive is not being added to that particular final product. But suppose that particular additive is being added to one of the ingredients. So that means that particular additive will be carry over to the final product via the ingredients. So this is the meaning of carry over where the additives are being carried over to the final product by the ingredients in which that particular additive has been used. So this is the carry over principle uh, with respect to food additives. Next question. 
विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज नॉट करेक्ट रिगार्डिंग रजिस्ट्रेशन लाइसेंसिंग अंडर एफ एस एस एक्ट टू थाउजेंड सिक्स सो एफ एस एस एक्ट टू थाउजेंड सिक्स हैज गिवन वेरियस गाइडलाइंस रिगार्डिंग द रजिस्ट्रेशन एंड लाइसेंसिंग ऑफ वेरियस फूड बिजनेसिस सो दीज आर द वेरियस स्टेटमेंट गिवन द नंबर वन सेज एफ बी ओज कैन स्टार्ट देयर बिजनेस ओनली आफ्टर ऑप्टेनिंग एंड एफ एस एस आई लाइसेंस रजिस्ट्रेशन दिस इज द करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट नेक्स्ट स्टेटमेंट पिटी मैन्युफैक्चरर हु हिमसेल्फ मैन्युफैक्चर और सेल्स any article of food have to register themselves with registering authority this is again the right statement they do not have to get the license but the pity manufacturers are required to have registered themselves under the registering authority next a statement license registrations are not premise based this is the wrong statement uh, just now we will uh, discuss about this the last statement is in case of license the application goes to designated officer and fso has the responsibility of carrying out the inspection of fbo's premises this is also the right statement as given by fss act 2006 regarding registration and licensing so now let's discuss why the option c is not the right statement regarding in the uh, question because licensing and registration uh, under fss act are premises based now what is the meaning of premises based it means that one premise if there is one single premise and different uh, kind of businesses are going on in that particular premise so only one uh, license or registration is required for one premise for example if you are having a Uh, uh premises and there you are uh, carrying out manufacturing as well as storage as well as retailing if all these different functions are being performed at a single premise so you do not need to have different license for different activities in spite only one license or one registration will uh, be enough for that one particular premise therefore licensing and registration under fss act 2006 are premise based next question what are the labeling requirements for infant milk substitutes and infant foods so these are the given under fss act 2006 that the label shall have no picture of infant and woman or both this is the right statement label shall contain important notice for statements namely mother's milk is best for your baby this is the uh, one which is being added just recently a few year back only the statement was being added in the fss act 2006 next warnings and captions about the use and storage of these food should be mentioned on the label this is also the right statement so the correct answer is all of these above here you can see in this picture also the important notice mother's milk is best for your baby this statement has been added uh, just recently next question we have number of hasab principles are so hasab stands for hazard analysis critical control point it is a management system in which food safety is addressed through analysis and control of various hazards that are physical chemical and biological so in this what we do we analyze the system from the starting to the end like uh, from farm to fork from the starting to end the system is being analyzed and different uh, critical points are analyzed that yes these are the points where the quality of the food can affect and then those particular points are controlled properly so that the final product is fully safe and secure so the has a principle are seven in number those are the number one being first we have to identify what are the various hazards then we have to identify the ccp like what can be the control limit for that particular hazard and if then we have to uh, establish the critical limit like if there is a deviation of this much from the critical uh, point then it will be acceptable and then once we have established our critical limits then we have to uh, make a monitoring process so that we can monitor the process Uh, and if there is any deviation we can have a quick glance over that and then we should have the corrective measures if we have uh, detected that yes that particular point has some defect so we are uh, we are in the position to correct that particular uh, problem and after that we have to have the process of verification and validation and lastly we need to have the all these things in a document for the purpose of auditing so these are the seven principles of hasap which are required to be followed for a successful hasap plan next and the last question which of these is a class 1 recall so let's first understand what is a food recall so food recall means the actions taken to remove sale distribution and consumption of food 
which may pose a safety risk to consumers for example if a product has been launched in the market but it is being found that that particular product is a hazard to uh, public health so then the actions which are being taken to remove the product from the market is known as food recall so the food recalls are of three types class 1 recall class 2 recall and class 3 recall so class 1 recall is for those products which can cause a serious injury to the public health or they even can cause the death like for example if a very fatal uh, toxin is being uh, found in any product so then the class 1 recall will be uh, implemented class 2 recalls are for those products which might cause serious injury or temporary illness like means they are not very severe and then class 3 is for uh, those products which are not that much uh, harmful or they are not having that much potential to cause injury or illness but they are not according to the FDA regulations. So these are the three classifications of recall. So in this question we have asked about class 1 recall. So the option A is the correct answer that states that hazards that cause serious health consequences or even can cause death comes under class 1 recall. So this is all about today's video if you like the video please give it a big thumbs up and share it with your friends and classmates and don't forget to subscribe to the channel see you in the next video till then stay safe stay healthy thank you